Well, can we even give freely and willingly while being responsible? Is that even possible? Is that something that we can do? Well, of course, you can be smart and free to make decisions at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, such is life. We're constantly having to make responsible decisions while still having the free reign to do whatever we want to do. So that's that's life. That's how we live our lives. Our money and how we give it can also fall into this particular place. So investing is not much different. So um, you want to invest in things that grow and you don't want to lose all your money. Therefore, you want to have money later. And in order to have money later, you need to be very uh, free with your investing, very outrageous and willing with your investing. Uh, but in order for you to grow your money and not lose it all, you also have to be responsible with how you invest for the long term. And so we freely invest while being responsible in the amounts and things that we choose to invest in. And that's very similar to your giving. Your giving, you freely give, but you have to be responsible about the amounts and the things you choose to give to. So it, it is no different in that particular way. And then spending is not much different. We're constantly making the decision between buying the things that we can afford and want versus buying the things that we cannot afford. And we can be responsible and only buy things we can afford while having the free reign to buy whatever falls within those boundaries. It's like with, with your budget, right? You can have money that's budgeted to be spent on things that you want, not just things that you need. And if you choose to spend that money on uh, whatever it may be, then that was there, that was responsibly planned out. But you could buy it on, you know, you could buy whatever you wanted to buy with that money, uh, but it was just there for that discretionary spending for you. And your giving can be no different. You can have, you know, giving money planned out how much you're going to give and then still have amounts that you discretionarily give uh, to whomever and however you choose to do so. So giving is no different than spending in that way. Then the question really comes, you know, why do we question this idea then? Why do we question giving responsibly and giving freely so much if it's not that much different than the other things we're already doing within maintaining financial balance and maintaining our financial lives? The honest truth is we don't want to give. We don't. As people, we want to do things that are self-serving. We want to do things that are only good for us. So we don't want to give. We don't want to look around and, and say, you know, where can my money make impact for other people? We want to make impact for ourselves. We're selfish in that way. And that's why we question this idea of giving freely and responsibly so much because we think, well, you know, oh, how can I do that? Because we feel like giving is this all or nothing thing that you're either a real generous person or you're not. No, there's spectrums of it, just like there is with saving and investing and just like there is with spending. There are definite spectrums to people who give money away. And yet we don't feel that way because it is not something that is ingrained in us. It's not something that many of us practice on a normal basis. And that's also an issue. We don't look at money and go, Giving is a natural part. That's something that we're just going to do, which is kind of crazy because what do we do every time we get you know, a paycheck? You're giving your taxes to the government and you're giving your money to the insurance companies. And I know it's a bit different, but there is money coming out that you probably don't want to give up, but you do. And the reason that you do is because you have to. And the problem with giving is that you don't have to do it. And I think that's the way people, a lot of people look at it is, I don't have to do it, then why would I do it? Well, it makes such a profound difference in the way that your financial life works. You should be doing it. But they look and go, well, I understand why I have to save. I understand why I have to invest for retirement because I won't have any money if I don't. I understand why I have to control my spending and spend money on things that I need and all that kind of stuff. I understand all those things. But why do I have to give? It's very simple. If you don't, your financial life will be out of whack. You will only look at money as something that can be consumed and you won't get the full picture 
of what money can do and the impact that you can make in the lives of others. And you will be an inward looking individual. You will be discontented. And that is not the way we were meant to be. We were meant to be content. We were meant to be outward looking and to help others in any way that we can. And that's why giving is so paramount. I mean, just naturally, this is not a muscle that people work very often. You ever, you know, you go to the gym and you notice that not many people do a bunch of leg work. Why? Because leg days are hard and you have to walk on those things all day and you have to feel that pain if you go through that workout. And so if you feel the pain of leg day and you're walking around, you're reminded of the pain of leg day. Well, it's because you probably don't work those muscles much if you're really struggling. Now, don't get me wrong, you can be sore just from normal workout, but I'm talking about you don't ever work your legs and you get in there and you work them and you're hurting. Why? Because you don't work those muscles. Well, in the same way, if you go and you you know, work this muscle of giving for the first time, it's going to be painful. It's going to be you know, kind of like pulling teeth. You're like, why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? Um, and just like going to the gym, you may be really excited, like, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to do leg day. But when it's over, you may go, well, that was a letdown or that kind of stinks. But it's because you haven't flexed that muscle. You haven't worked that muscle yet. And so you're uncomfortable with this idea of giving to others. You're uncomfortable with this idea of giving to organizations and, and things that could use your money for good. We can give freely and responsibly in the same way that we spend and save responsibly. So naturally, this giving is just another use of money, obviously. Just another use of money. Um, look at it as such. There's a reason I call the financial balance a, a three-legged stool. Because without all the legs being the same length, and without all the legs being there and being intact, then you're going to fall off that stool. And so you need all three, and it's just another use. It's tied to religion, so you feel weird about it, right? So uh, my background for wanting to give freely comes from biblical principles. And I want to give freely because of these biblical principles and because God has given to me. And I, I feel like, you know, if, if he can give to me, you know, somebody who doesn't deserve it, then I can give to others who don't necessarily deserve it. And that would be my outpouring of, you know, his love uh, for others. And, and I would, you know, pour that onto others as well. And so I feel like, since it's tied to religion, a lot of people feel weird about it and they go, well, I'm not going to give money away. Well, you don't have to give money to religious organizations. It's not what I'm getting at. I, I'm not pushing you to do that at all. What I'm pushing you to do is to, is to work this muscle in your financial life. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe wholeheartedly in giving to uh, causes that are in line, like we've talked about, with your beliefs and your values. Um, but if you don't have any religious belief or religion, then that's fine. But you can still give to things that are in line with your value system and in line with things you're passionate about uh, in the same way that individuals give to their religious organizations. So it, it gets weird for people in that way, but you don't have to look at it through that lens. It's been misconstrued as such, and I don't want it to be. Um, it's important to your financial life whether or not um, you are a believer or not. It's important to your financial life regardless of how you view money and who you view money came from and, and, and things like that, right? It's, it's, it's going to be important for you regardless. Uh, so definitely take all of this into account. And when it comes down to it, we were made to give and we were made to help others. And the reason that I say this is when you give, you feel fulfilled. You feel like you've done something good. You, especially when you see the fruits of what you've given, then you're like, okay, I've done something. I've made an impact. I've helped somebody else. And you feel good about it. It's a natural feeling. You feel good about the things you've done. And it's why balance in your financial life with spending and saving is so important. Because if you aren't doing all three, if you don't have all three working for you, right, then you're going to fall over. It's gonna. There's going to be a big issue coming. The reason that it is the balancing act, though, is because it was something you were made to do. You weren't just put here on earth to, you know, spend your money and invest it and leave it to your kids. Even though those are fine things, there, there's something missing. And that thing that's missing is 
helping others with your money, doing something more than just for you with your money, giving your money to things that you believe in, giving your money freely, and giving your money responsibly. 